Hi, it's Marty, and welcome to the first episode of In Marty Fuck. Okay, let's do this. In Marty's Fuck. <laughs> In Marty's Fuck. Hi, it's Marty, and welcome to the first episode of IMO, or In Marty's Opinion, where I, the eponymous Marty, will be talking about anything from TV shows, to movies, to video games, to books, to whatever. I love consumable media, and I love talking about consumable media, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And let me just say now that these are just that, opinions. They should be taken as such, taken with a grain of salt, I mean, like, you know, this is just my certain thoughts on a certain piece of media. If you're really feeling that butthurt, you can always leave a comment. I'm down for discussion. But, I mean, like, I'm new to this, you know. I'm a babe in the woods. Speaking of babes in the woods, Finn the Human. Speaking of Finn the Human, Adventure Time. Adventure Time, come on, grab your friends, in case you have been living under a rock for the past six years, is a cartoon on Cartoon Network created by the teddy bear Guillermo del Toro that is Pendleton Ward. It chronicles the totally mathematical adventures of Finn the Human and Jake the Dog as they save princesses, plunder dungeons, fight bad guys, and do it with style. I highly recommend that you watch at least one episode, you know, give it a try. It is very weird, there's no denying that. The characters are very off the wall and the world itself is just kind of alienating at first. It's very kitty and has a very childish tone to it, so I can see how that could put some people off. But give it a try, because underneath that kind of interesting art and really, really weird world, there's this very genuine and heartfelt cartoon that uh, I highly recommend to everyone. I'm pretty sure you can find it on Netflix. If not, you can try, you know, YouTube. I should say that from this point forward, we are going to be getting into some spoilery territory, so, you know, be warned. If you couldn't tell already, I love Adventure Time. Like, a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of media, if not my favorite piece of media. It's definitely my favorite cartoon. But why? Why do I like this kids show made for kids that airs on Cartoon Network? Why is this so important to me? Well, for one, I don't think it was made just for children, but Idea Channel did a whole video on that that's really awesome and you should watch it. Link in the, uh, the doobie-doo. And it's not like I was a grown-ass adult when I was watching it. I mean, I'm not even a grown-ass adult now, really. In fact, I was 12 years old, the same age as Finn. I think that's why I feel such a connection to the show. I sort of grew up with Finn. We went through a lot of the same things at the same time. Struggling to be taken seriously by adults, dealing with crushes, starting and being in a relationship, dealing with your parents and how their actions reflect on you, that odd sense of loneliness that everyone feels growing up, and the million other things that Adventure Time, Adventure Time managed to nail about growing up. I usually cite Jake the Dog as my favorite character from Adventure Time, maybe because I didn't really have a dad growing up and Jake the Dog was some kind of weird proxy dad for me, but I'll always feel closest to Finn because we grew up together. However, more than just sharing an adolescence with Finn, the show itself grew up with me too. If you watch the earlier episodes of Adventure Time, season one, two kind of stuff, it's very sporadic. You know, there's lots of throwaway characters and jokes. You get a pretty good impression of what each character is like each episode. It's not very cohesive. It's very easy for you to just jump right in. It's made to be kind of watched as like on the TV. You just kind of put it on and you start watching it. It's not very um, serialized. It's made, for lack of a better word, for children. Which is not to detract from its quality at all. They're still hilarious and wonderfully animated. In fact, some of my favorite, some of my favorite episodes are from this era. Uh, some standouts are Dungeon, Freak City, and uh, The Jiggler. Yeah, it's a good one. As the show progressed, it started doing something typically reserved for serialized novels or hour-long dramas or anime. It started building a world, and not just like half-ass building a world like some cartoons do, whole ass building a world. Let me say that again, whole ass building a world. Save for that whole tree trunks thing that went down in the first and second season, like when tree trunks ate the crystal apple and then she disappeared and then she ended up being the crystal queen, that shit was crazy. Remember that shit? There wasn't much of a cohesiveness to the world. I hadn't really noticed anything until the season 4 episode, King Worm, which has some awesome artwork, by the way. I noticed that there were a lot of references made that you wouldn't understand if you didn't watch Adventure Time regularly. It stopped holding the viewer's hand. It required that you knew about certain characters' pasts and their personalities. It even made some reference to fan theories and the, even the Nicktoons 7-minute pilot that was made 
six years ago, which is awesome. You should watch that too. If you want another episode like that that has a lot of references and that's really great actually, uh, I recommend All the Little People. I think it's a season five episode, although that one's a lot weirder. I rewatched some earlier episodes and I realized that this consistent world building and serialized arcs go all the way back to season one and two, the episode His Hero or First Introduced to Billy and the Legitimately Terrifying Lich. This introduction isn't even really paid off until the season two finale, the two episode arc Mortal Folly and Mortal Recoil, and not actually paid off until the season four or five finale, the three episode arc, it was The Lich, Finn the Human, and Jake the Dog. Those episodes were awesome, and they paid off a lot of really interesting arcs. These episodes blew Adventure Time fans out of the water because it felt like they had been setting this up since the very beginning. Whether or not they actually were was beside the point because it was still just so fucking cool. Even to me as a 15 year old. In the same way that it's cool to know that Westeros has a past, present, and future, it's really cool to know that Ooh has a past as seen in episodes like Simon and Marcy, a present as seen in, you know, every episode, and a future as seen in Lemon Hope. And even more than that, in recent episodes, Venture Time has started to tackle more complex and compelling issues with growing up. The show has gone from struggles with childhood to struggles with adolescence to struggles with self-actualization. You know, the kind of stuff that goes right over kids' heads and rings way too true with young adults. I mean, just watch the episode Astral Plane and tell me you haven't had some of the same thoughts that Finn has had about loneliness. Watch the episode Lemon Hope and tell me you haven't also struggled with choosing between your obligations and your freedom. And that's what's so cool about Adventure Time. It evolved with its audience. In the same way that its characters have grown and evolved into more complex beings, Adventure Time itself has grown and evolved into a more complex, compelling show. The only other cartoon that I can think of that has this level of character development and world building is Avatar The Last Airbender, but that's an episode for another time. I just really, really love Adventure Time. It's really important to me, the same way that I'm sure it's very important to many of you out there. It helped me through the insane adventure that is growing up, and I'm really glad I got to share that adventure with Finn and Jake. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.